This particular map of Antarctica is one of my favorites to use. It has a detail level that others don't, and you can see things that show where life might have been. The topography here is incredibly complex and detailed. Now, in today's video, I have a series of finds, never before seen, I want to show you. And once again, it just begs the question, why are they hiding it? Because it's in Google Earth Pro. And when I show what I'm going to show today, I don't know how anyone could have any other explanation other than what we're seeing is an artificial creation. Now, where we're going to be. Down here in this corner of what they call the Western Antarctic or the Peninsula of Antarctica, there are these deep trenches. And on Google Earth Pro, I've shown this, I've labeled this area Monster Access Port, where there are these very, very deep channels. Now, next to this, there is this giant flat plain. And if there had been life, this would have been someplace it would have flourished. So without any further delay, where that area corresponds to here on Google Earth Pro is down here. At one time, back in the 50s, part of the exploration of the region was meant to determine whether this was two land masses or one. They really weren't sure whether Western Antarctica, this area here to the upper left, and Eastern Antarctica were connected. And they are two very different places. But let me show you what I found today. It's I was looking at one series of finds and stumbled on another one. And it's going to be kind of a two-part video today that I'm going to try to get all done in one. Now, who remembers as a kid, if you're from the Midwest or someplace where it snows, where it's snowing all night, and you wake up in the morning and there's this fresh sheet of snow, and you go look for shapes in the snow. How many of you woke up to find shapes like this? in the snow and ice. I've labeled this one, I, I guess moray eel would be the best I have here. I mean, maybe I lived in the boring part of the Midwest where ice and snow just didn't blow itself into shapes like this. But if that were the only one, it would probably be a curiosity. Tell me that's not some type of a horned entry platform. How could this possibly have just been created by the forces of nature? I have seen things down here in the last year, never seen before in my life, nothing like it. And very close to it, we have talked about different Egyptian gods and South American gods, primarily Toth. This is Anubis. This is the jackal right here. This is the head, of course. This is the eye. And here are the ears. This is the head of Anubis. I mean, I don't know any other explanation for this. Because your only other explanation is that nature. Now, who created it? That's up for debate. Absolutely. You can have multiple opinions on that. But here's the crowning glory of today's video. Those of you down here in the South, who in the heck wouldn't recognize this head? These armored eyebrows, this low sloping nose, you can even see the nostrils, the eye. This is the shape of some type of a serpent's head. 
more specifically reptile, gator. And of course, this couldn't possibly be the statue of some humanoid figure right here. And these were the things I stumbled on while looking into a completely different avenue for the video. I've never seen anything quite like the images from Google Earth Pro in Antarctica, in the high-res regions. You're telling me that when you look at this, you don't see a creation. There was another region where I showed the face of a simian in detail. I mean, literally, it had ears, chin, eyes, nose, eyebrows, everything. And here we have a 3D representation of literally the exact same thing. I labeled it bear, lion, apex because you could probably see all three. But the more I look at it, it has more of a simian kind of feature. Or maybe it's something we don't know. I just am gobsmacked at this one. I mean, this many things in such a small area. Now, I'll leave this one up to interpretation here. As to what you think this might be. I mean, you would have to be willingly ignorant at this point to not see this kind of stuff. Now, the original video has to do with something that was brought to the channel a month or two ago. And let's see if we can get this picture to... There we go. Sorry about that. Viewer brought this image of what looked like a jet leaving out of an iceberg. And the more we looked at it and the more we looked in the region, it was very clear that this was some type of an aircraft. Who put it there? Who's operating it? That's up for debate. But let me show you something in Antarctica near that that would give you a cause to maybe think something else is going on other than what they're telling you. Now, this was from a 2010 layer, February 14th, 2010. And here's the original image. I have it circled from Google Earth Pro. Now, on this quote-unquote iceberg, there are some very strange things going on that I don't know how you would explain any other way, especially back here. It looks like there's some type of an antenna array. Now, I don't think they created an iceberg. I think they took one and they modified it for their own purposes. But what this ties into is another area. What we found, and this is in 2012, is this very strange region that they have imaged over three days. Now, this is part of the investigation that gets a little bit more advanced. If you find a region in Google Earth Pro where up here in the upper left, do you see the time slider? This is an image from 1-13-2012. This is an image from 1-10-2012. 2012. For some reason, they high resed this image, this area, twice in three days. There's areas of Antarctica, they don't high res image every five years. For some reason, they sent a satellite over this area and imaged it twice in three days. Pardon me, 1-10-2012 and 1-13-2012. Now, here's the smoking gun. Remember the blue jet? They lost one. 
is what it looks like. Here's the image right here of something very deep dark blue that has crashed on the ice. This image is 113. Here's the same image, 110. Now that image you were just looking at is this right here. See how it's a very different color? And see how we also have some type of a human being on the ice right in front of it? This image shifts just slightly. I'm going to go ahead and go forward to 113, 2012. Now the person here looks like they're seated, perhaps is made of fire, but their craft is back here. Looks like perhaps maybe something was leaking out of it. They lost craft 2012 over Antarctica, one of these blue craft. And they were trying to find it. We'll go back, 110. Here's what was likely the pilot. Here's the craft right here. You can't see it because of the... You can't see it as well because of the coloration. So they re-imaged it with a different satellite with different settings. And here's what it looks like, 113. This is a crash site. You can see all sorts of evidence around here for some type of manipulation by a humanoid. There would be no other good reason that I can think of to image an area like this out in the middle of nowhere twice, twice in three days, in 72 hours. There are very few governments on the planet that have the ability to do this. To send a satellite to a remote region like this and pull this kind of imagery. And there are a great many things in this region I can see why they would have had an aircraft looking at it. And we're going to do those in another video because we're already at 13 minutes. But I'll give you the coordinates for this and you can look for yourself. And I'm sure a lot of you will find that stuff right away. Here's one of those locations. What's all this? And I'll just leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.